and we welcome you back to the program. We have uh, our guest here, Mr. Michael M. Hotep, and we're going to go and take a couple of callers first, and uh, we'll get immediately to our guest. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how are you viewing us, please? Yes, Sly Soul, Sly Go. Happy 2018. I <laughs> hope welcome. we get more awakenings. I know we will. you got the right one on your show today. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> and he's uh, definitely uh, a good speaker and, and a, a wealth of knowledge to uh, continue the awakenings that we definitely need to be part of and to understand. Uh, I wanted to say something about um, an alarming fact that um, many may not know or believe, but uh, they're saying the flu shot uh, has the mercury toxicity in it that results in brain injury. Yeah. Autoimmune injury mm -hmm. and uh, lunamin is associated with uh, Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's disease and seizures. Mm -hmm. So we got these pharmaceuticals that's pumping us up. You know, the real mm -hmm. drug dealers, the legal drug dealers, are pumping us up with so many uh, meds and uh, vaccinating people. And uh, people are, are not understanding that they're willing participants. Mm -hmm. We're, we're like lab rats on the planet <laughs> for them to just, um, you know, prescribe anything to us. Yeah. Uh, also, there is a, a well-known black scientist that exposed a, a, a corporation that was putting pesticides on the produce. And this pesticide was demasculating men and uh, causing... Uh, less development in the penis so they were saying that could be another reason of a high rise of homosexuality as well I look at all of this field you know I look at it as population control stop Okay. Uh, question. Yeah. Was, that, yeah, was, that, question. was that Professor Tyrone Hayes out of the University of California Tyrone right okay uh, I'm familiar yeah, with this I got research. his name here Tyrone Hayes yeah. he exposed okay the company, and they uh, did death threats to his family and was following him around to hush him up. Wow. Right, right. It was a fertilizer that was used on corn, about 50% of the corn. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been following his research for a number of years. Mm -hmm. He also did research on frogs and found yes. that exposure to this type of pesticide caused uh, male frogs to, if I remember correctly, become female. Uh, yeah. it, it reduced the size of the genitalia. Uh, he and a number of different um, uh, researchers did research on mammals as well mm -hmm. and found that exposure to this uh, particular type of uh, 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 things of pesticide or something like that caused uh, similar changes in uh, mammals as well. Mm -hmm. Caused male mammals to become female or develop female traits, different things like this. Mm. Now, did, did she say they put some kind of chemical on condoms? Did you say that? <coughs> did you say that? Sylvia? Sylvia? I, I can't hear you. What did she say? Did you say they they put some kind of pesticide on condoms? Uh, no, they put it on the produce, and once they put it on the produce, and you oh, eat produce. it, you you're you're having the formalities oh, okay. in your right. the oh. penis, and that they uh, what they say demasculating yeah. and causing um, right. you know oh, males okay. to go to the homosexual oh, lifestyle. Right, right. Well, you 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 have things that throw off hormones. You have. Uh, um, what's it called? Uh, I forgot the exact term, some type of uh, disruptor or something like that. But there's a lot of research on this. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, the name of the pesticides is A T R A Z I N E. A T R A Z I N E. Yeah, atrazina. Uh, the company is Centra S Y N G E N T A S Y N G E N T A. If I can read my writing, my notes. Okay, just a little uh, FYI for your people to understand how population control does exist, and uh, that's why we have to stay awakening. Thank you, and I'll hang up and listen to your great guest. Okay. Well, Thanks, Sylvia. Love you all. Yeah, okay. take care. Love you too, Sylvia. Um, it's interesting that recently um, there has been a uh, an announcement by, uh, who is it, Dunkin' Donuts, that they're going to take um, some chemical and coloring 
out of their foods. Mm -hmm. And uh, Post Cereal Company is taking chemicals out of their cereal. And Oscar Meyer is taking the chemicals out of their meats. So I don't know how many more are going to follow, but right. it, it may have some, you know, something to do with what's being uh, discovered or uncovered, shall we say. Right, right. Yeah. They, they determine, uh, various studies determine the side effects mm -hmm. of these particular chemicals uh, so in, in the foods. Yeah, well... Back by popular demand is mm -hmm. Michael M. Hotel. <laughs> hey, Thank thanks for having me. It's a crazy morning this morning. A lot mm -hmm. went wrong, so apologize for being late. But uh, we talked over the weekend, and uh, we know that uh, January 15th is Dr. King Day coming up, uh, number one. Number two, we know this is the uh, first month of the year. This is January. Uh, today is January 8th, 2018. Happy New Year to you all. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people uh, talk about, well, what can we do? What should African Americans be focused on in 2018? Mm -hmm. Okay, especially in the era of Donald Trump. We saw Donald Trump went crazy this weekend, mm -hmm. all right? Another yeah. Twitter rant. Oh, yeah. He's pushing back on the book Fire and Fury for mm -hmm. Michael Wolf, which is a really exposing the, uh, the, the, the uh, ineptitude and exposing mm -hmm. the chaos in the Trump administration, all mm -hmm. emanating from Donald Trump himself. Mm -hmm. Okay, and as they talked about this morning on Morning Joe, uh, Joe Scarborough talked about how uh, there are many people in the White House that know that Donald Trump has, has early, uh, is in the early stages of dementia. Whoa. As well. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. As well. <laughs> Go to MSNBC.com. Watch the story this morning because they interviewed Michael Wolf this morning and they really went deep into this MSNBC.com. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. first off, um, you know, Dr. King Day is coming up January 15th and Dr. King is one of our most disrespect the most misunderstood uh, leaders. And uh, there's been a, a campaign to sanitize his uh, image and to um, uh, present him as not being the revolution le revolutionary leader uh, that he was. Mm. Uh, when we look at Dr. King, he was an advocate of economic boycotts. He was an mm -hmm. advocate of equal rights for uh, African Americans, but he also stayed abreast of the developments on the continent of Africa. Uh, we know that in 1957, when Ghana celebrated its independence, uh, Dr. King went to Ghana to celebrate with Kwame Nkrumah president of, of, of Ghana, and he went back each year on the anniversary of their independence as well, okay? Mm -hmm. like independence date was? Uh, the, uh, I don't remember the exact independence date, but it was 1957. 57, it was, oh, yeah, it was 1957. They were, uh, Ghana was the first um, African nation to gain its independence from the colonial powers, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and we know that uh, the, the um, African liberation movement on the continent of Africa was uh, happening, happening at the same time that the civil rights movement was taking place in this country as well. Mm -hmm. And they were both inspired by one another. They were both learning by another, one another. Um, if you look at Dr. King and Malcolm X towards the end of both of their lives, we see that their ideologies were converging. Okay, the ideologies were converging. Uh, if people read the book uh, Martin Malcolm in America, A Dream or a Nightmare by James H. Cone, James H. Cone fairly deals with this and shows you passages from uh, uh, Dr. King speaking and, and Malcolm speaking towards the end of both of their lives, and they sound almost identical. Mm. We know when Malcolm officially uh, separates from the Nation of Islam, March 8, 1964, Malcolm joins the Civil Rights Movement, and he helps to radicalize the Civil Rights Movement. This is something that's not talked about, mm -hmm. okay? March 26, 1964, Malcolm attends the U.S. Senate debate for the Civil Rights Act in 1964. So mm -hmm. all the pictures you see of Dr. King and Malcolm X together were taken March 26, 1964, because that's the only time that they met. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And then we know that uh, 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 Malcolm is going to uh, advocate for African-Americans to register to vote and to vote, but get something tangible for your vote. OK, don't just vote for a party because uh, it's a, p a particular party. He's talking about getting something tangible in exchange for your vote. Mm -hmm. But he but when he separates from the nation of Islam, he can speak more freely. OK, and he, he uh, towards his tenure in the nation of Islam, he realized that he, he felt that the nation should have gotten involved in the civil rights movement and done more for African-Americans as a whole. So when we look at Dr. King, we saw that Dr. King admired Marcus Garvey. We saw that Dr. King didn't hate Malcolm X. Malcolm didn't hate Dr. King either, okay? Along the way, there were some disagreements and tactics, right? But um, we, we see that uh, Dr. King is, is one of our most misunderstood um, leaders, and, and one of the main reasons he's misunderstood is because people don't even understand that I have a dream speech. 
okay? Which was not even the original name of the speech. The original name of the speech was called a council check. The speech was about economics. The speech was about holding America accountable for a promissory note that gave us 100 years prior. And when we go to try to cash that promissory note at the bank, it's marked insufficient funds. Mm -hmm. right. Okay? Because when you right. look at the speech, he was talking about the conditions that we were dealing with at the time. He talked about the rampant racism, discrimination. He talked about black people being uh, moving from a smaller ghetto to a larger ghetto. He said we can't uh, stop uh, while the Negro in the South can't vote and the Negro in New York feels he has nothing to vote for. Okay, he talked about police brutality. He deals with all this in the speech. Mm -hmm. But well, what happens is, because of the television, they just focus on the last two minutes or so of the speech, mm -hmm. okay, when he's talking about the dream. Oh, yeah. Well, 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 what people don't know is that the phrase, I have a dream, didn't even appear in the original drafts of the speech. Mm. Okay? He was supposed to speak for about four and a half minutes. He was the last speaker on that day, March on Washington, uh, August 28, 1963. And... He, the, he spoke for about 16 and a half minutes or so, almost 17 minutes. The majority of it he spoke extemporaneously. Towards the end of the speech, Mahalia Jackson, who's on the stage, yells out, tell him about the dream, Martin. So then he refers to a speech he gave about two months before in Detroit and starts talking about the dream. Mm -hmm. But the speech was not even about the dream. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's not even what it was about, mm -hmm. okay? So uh, he's totally misunderstood. The, the focus on economic empowerment, the focus on targeted sustained economic withdrawal strategies is not really discussed when we deal with Dr. King. And unfortunately, uh, just like the Me Too movement, as we talked about last time, unfortunately, his legacy has been hijacked mm -hmm. largely by Europeans to sanitize him, to make him more palatable to Europeans so he could be marketed. You could have the Dr. King Day. They can mm -hmm. have all type of Dr. King Day sales and, and uh, mm -hmm. postage stamp, things of this nature. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of callers, and I want to ask our engineer to uh, display the uh, call-in numbers at the bottom of the screen. Mm -hmm. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how you're viewing us, please? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm viewing you over the Internet, and I'm Tyrone. Okay. Tyrone, how you doing? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, wait. Okay. I can't, the engineer, I can't hear you all when... Uh, and over the TV, and I can't hear you too much over the phone. But I'm gonna go. I did hear some somewhat. I agree with the your guest. Uh, Martin Luther King was a real revolutionary. And Martin Luther King, you, I suggest that everyone get his speech. Mm -hmm. If you get that speech, you will see him. He went to Washington. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, he went to Washington. And one thing I would say on that, he told him that. 1963 is not the end, it's just the beginning. If you, if that check bounces, then uh, we will continue to shake the foundation of America. A lot of people don't know that in 1963, starting in Birmingham, Alabama, night uh, of April the 3rd, mm -hmm. 38 days straight, they interrupted production and commerce and brought the power structure to his knees because there was in the street obstructing traffic. You're and talking about that the Birmingham became campaign? the form of demonstration. It wasn't a demonstration to appeal. Mm -hmm. It was to hurt the economy. And in that year, in 800 cities, experienced those types of demonstration. That's why he told them 63 was not the end, it was beginning, and we, if, you, if that check keeps bouncing, we will continue to sh shake the foundation of America. People, a lot of people don't know about 63. Now, but let me say this real fast. I'm, sure. I've been talking to people, and trying to get a, a specific detail. We are under receivership of the state. Our vote is not the last word. The Financial Review Commission got the last word on any affair in Detroit. And they appointed and got the majority of the appointees are from the governor. So we are under, uh, or we are under dictatorship from Lansing. So we got someone go and we look at our, we don't have no assets no more. The water is under the Great Lake Authority. Eastern Market is under authority. Cobo Hall is under authority. Right. A snow and, and garbage pickup is under authority of suburbians now. If we send somebody to Washington, how specifically will they 
channel the money back and help us with a dying uh, problem we have our young millennium is a uh, transit with housing if we don't control the housing but the land bank authority uh, uh, uh mostly white control that how if how do they filter anything back to the people of detroit i could never get no one to give me no detail i'm gonna hang up and and uh, maybe you all could help me thank you for calling tyrone well, one um, one thing that has to take place, first of all, uh, people have to vote, number one, because when you have representation that's not representing you and you stay at home and don't fire them and vote them out of office, then you are letting them know that you agree with what they're doing, mm -hmm. basically. OK, right. so you right. so so November 6, 2018, uh, midterm elections, all 435 seats in the U.S. House of Representatives are up. OK, mm -hmm. African-Americans have to have to show up and vote their interests. OK, mm -hmm. uh, also, you have to negotiate something tangible in exchange for your vote. You have to look at uh, the policies that the candidates are presenting and not vote along party lines, but vote based upon policies. Mm -hmm. OK, and line and, and see which candidates policies line up with yours as well, but, but lines up best with yours. The other thing is when we look at the mobilization that took place in 2017 in opposition to Donald Trump, we look at the indivisible movement and people can download the guide indivisible uh, from indivisible guide dot com. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, you had thousands of people across the country learning how to organize and mobilize and impact their members of Congress, their members of the U.S. House of Representatives and and members of the U.S. Senate, and they organize from that document, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that I encourage people to do is to download the document from the Congressional Black Caucus, the 125-page agenda that they presented to Donald John Trump March of 2017. It's called We Have a Lot to Lose. We have, because Donald Trump asked black people, what do you have to lose? And they responded, we have a lot to lose. Mm -hmm. And it's called Solutions, uh, 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 21st Century Solutions for the Black Family. And what they do in there is not only lay out history of African Americans, how we got into this predicament, they then lay out uh, the problems that we're dealing with in our communities based upon categories, whether it's criminal justice reform, whether it's uh, voter discrimination, job discrimination, et cetera. Then they lay out legislation, legislation designed to address the issues that they laid out. Mm -hmm. So this is legislation that has to be pushed. These are policies that need to be pushed in every African-American community across the country from a local, state, and national level. Okay, so, uh, and Doc, we know Dr. Carl Anderson has plans in the black uh, 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 powernomics and black labor, white wealth, but the one from the Congressional Black Caucus mm -hmm. is really good because this is from lawmakers, mm -hmm. and they're showing you how the how policies impact every aspect of your life. Two ways to understand politics. Number one, the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power, and resources. Mm -hmm. As we just saw from the uh, 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 tax cut, is going to blow $1.5 trillion in the debt, and by 2027 is going to uh, give 83% of the benefits to the top 1%. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, politics uh, deals with the writing of laws, statutes, ordinances, amendments, and treaties, their adoption, interpretation, and enforcement. Politics impacts every aspect of your life, from the water you drink to the air you breathe to the food you eat to whether the marijuana is legal or illegal for medicinal purposes or recreational purposes. Mm -hmm. I was just in California at the beginning of the year doing some lectures, uh, New, uh, December 30th, 31st, and I was speaking uh, uh, January 2nd also. And California, January 1st, uh, it's legal for recreational marijuana. Mm -hmm. But we still know marijuana is illegal at the federal level. Mm -hmm. So we just saw Jefferson Beauregard Sessions III, Donald Trump's attorney general, we just saw them reverse the Obama era policy that had federal prosecutors to back off prosecuting uh, people using uh, marijuana in uh, states that had it, uh, voted for it either uh, for recreational usage or medicinal purposes. Well, another thing about that in California, Donald Trump has a real um, hatred mm -hmm. for that state mm -hmm. and has said so and because it is predominantly uh, generating votes from parties other than the Republican Party right he does not like that so well he has changed a lot of policies mm -hmm. that affect California well also they have a large Hispanic population as well 
and California also. This is this is the other thing. We know California has the largest number of electoral college votes, 66, largest in the largest in the country because of their population, right? So he has an antipathy uh, for for California, but he also has an antipathy for African Americans. Okay, as we see constantly uh, uh, displayed as well. So so these are things that we uh, need to understand. But I encourage people to to download those documents. They're free to download also. Download mm -hmm. those documents as well. Mm. Okay, we have a caller, but I want to uh, just okay. clarify something. You said we have a lot to lose. Yeah, That's we have it. a lot to lose. That is from the Congressional Black Caucus. Okay. Uh, good, their website is cbc.house.gov. CBC.house.gov. The other thing is that's the official website of the Congressional Black Caucus. They, they, uh, every, uh, all 49 members of the Congressional Black Caucus have a page there. You can find out bills that they sponsor. You can look at committees that your member of the Congressional Black Caucus sits on. You can find out how they vote. And you can call their office and get more information to hold them accountable as well. Accountable. And, and and that yeah. goes for the white ones too. Right. Okay. That's cbc.house.gov. cbc.house.gov. Right. Now, house.gov is the uh, uh, official website of the U.S. House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. So that shows they have, they, have, they have information for all 435 members of the U.S. House of Representatives there as well. Mm -hmm. Can we go to a caller? Mm -hmm. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how you're viewing us, please? My name is Rosa Watson, and I'm calling. From, from, I'm watching Channel 91. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you for calling. I want to openly thank Theo Broden and you for being such a great, great help for our community. Thank you. You've been a long-time warrior. I know that about Theo because she has always worked for the interest of the people. I'm enjoying your guess. He's exactly right about the Congressional Black Caucus. Uh -huh. I, uh, if you remember when we were on the same board, yes. I brought her a copy of that Congressional Yellow Book, mm -hmm. which tells you everything about each and every member in the House, the Senate, as well as every governor mm -hmm. in every state. Right. And that is so important to keep up with what they believe in, what they stand for, mm -hmm. and just keep your hands on that pulse of what's going on. The last thing I want to mention, whoever we send to Congress, uh -huh. and I agree, we should always have an elected official representing us. Mm -hmm. I, I only stated that the office is still open and operating. Mm -hmm. And I only use passport for one example, because Congresswoman, um, there are two Congresswomen that spoke Sunday on and mentioned how they are helping that office keep active until they get their elective representative in there. Because you, in every office, there's a legislative director. Mm -hmm. That person deals with the le writing of that legislation for that particular member. Right. So I'm glad yeah, that everybody's going to keep their eye on the ball and try to put somebody in Kanye's seat. Don't let it stay vacant because he got to get on that floor and yes, argue those yes, legislative yes. issues. Mm -hmm. And I just thank you right. so much oh, for what you all are doing. Thank and you. I'm enjoying your guests. Thank you. And God thank you. bless you all. Uh, thank you, Rosa. Thanks. So it was really uh, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, yes, I know that uh, each of the representatives has, has a person who helps to... Uh, um, write and mm -hmm. form uh, with with the uh, right uh, policy words and, oh and speeches that. oh oh yeah oh yeah oh, oh absolutely the, the bills that they want to put on right the floor. right policies but yes that person cannot present it it cannot go on the floor and for us to go almost a year mm -hmm. without a representative 
That's like the BD said. That's criminal. Well, well, this is was this purpose, purposely done mm -hmm. by Snyder. The mm -hmm. reason why is because in the House of Representatives, even though uh, Republicans have about 239 uh, uh, members and Democrats 193 approximately, mm -hmm. there have been a, a few votes that were very, very close mm -hmm. by two votes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he is purposely doing this yep. to benefit the Republican Party. Exactly. Okay, so we have to understand this now. Yeah. Um, uh, when we look at the 13th uh, Congressional District, uh, regardless of the name of the person or who their father was or what have you, we need to also look at the policies mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that they present. We need to look at where they stand on criminal justice reform. We know there was mm -hmm. bipartisan support in the U.S. Senate for criminal justice reform, but one of the people who derailed that was is your Attorney General now, Jefferson Beauregard Sessions III, mm -hmm. because he's totally against any type of criminal justice reform. We right. need to look at where, where, where they stand on making um, making uh, uh, college affordable, okay? Because Trump is not even talking about that yeah, now. Right. You know, where did uh, where it stand on raising the minimum wage to a living wage, but something sensible, okay? Mm -hmm. $15 across the board may not really be realistic all across the country, okay? Mm -hmm. But where do they stand on these various issues? Where do they stand on issues when it comes to the gutting of the civil rights departments and the Department of oh, EPA, yeah. Environmental Protection Agency, the Department of Justice, yep. the Department of Education, yeah, right, yeah. under Donald John Trump? OK, right. so we've seen over 100 policy reversals that Trump has done reversing policies from the Obama administration. Mm -hmm. OK, mm -hmm. so re regardless of who your relatives are, we need to understand where do you stand on the policies that impact every aspect of our life? That's right. And I hear they just slide papers under his hand and he signs. They don't even know what he's signing. Well, but before we go to the phone, I'm go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. About education. Sure. East Point, I understand. Um, it used to be um, East Detroit. East Detroit, right. Sure. Has passed a, a policy in their school district that mm -hmm. says the children no longer have to do homework. East Point, children no longer have to do homework. Mm -hmm. Now, people in Detroit said, oh, that's a good idea. We should have that here. Then the kids will have to worry about bringing books home, et cetera, et cetera. However, there are educators who say the uh, benefit of that is to the prisons because the homework is, is for the children to uh, practice mm -hmm. and, and to, um, uh, to make concrete what they are learning in school. Reinforce it. Hours, right? yeah, re reinforces it. Now, when they don't have to have that reinforcement or they come home or they play or whatever, then it works against them. Right. Now, if you notice in the suburbs, the children still have homework. Mm -hmm. hmm. Right. Think about that. So well, 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 not only that, with homework, it, it's not just to reinforce what you study, but also you should be uh, uh, reading ahead or, or at least skimming the information that you're going to cover the next day as well mm -hmm. so that it's not foreign to you so you can better understand it also. Well, once they go to college, they have to do homework. Well, well, even the high school, it, yeah, even even in a lot of preparatory high schools preparing you for college, you're going to have to do that as well. So exactly. I, I, I want to get some more information on why so, they decided to do that in they, East Point. Yeah, other, East other Point, than, Michigan. Somebody on uh -huh. Facebook said East Point, Georgia. No, East Point, East Michigan. East Point, Michigan. Yes. Other than helping the prison uh, <laughs> uh, pipeline, what is it? You know right. what's interesting? The school to prison uh, pipeline. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. What I, I I do with my granddaughters, I'll emphasize because this is where I've been as a student. I never wanted to walk into a uh, class as a blank sheet of paper, mentally speaking. Sure. I always wanted to know ahead of time, so that way, if there was terminology, language, etc., that I wasn't familiar with, when the teacher or an instructor spoke on it, at least I would have a, a, a something to work with as opposed to coming in with nothing. Mm -hmm. and, and what I find interesting when you say no homework, mm -hmm. and then we know that they've taken vocational uh, studies out of schools, sure. and they've centralized them, in, you know, like uh, Bright Hop or something like that, and then they have stopped cursive writing. This is all the destruction of the educational system, right. but it's done in a piecemeal fashion as well. Right. And, you know, what is the result again? It's increasing the uh, prison, uh, school to prison pipeline. Yep. Right, exactly, exactly. Here we got another caller. Okay. okay. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how you're viewing us, please? Yeah, slice so, slice go. Calling back quickly. I'm glad, I'm glad you guys mentioned the, the constant abuse that's going on with our children. And, mm -hmm. and let's not forget the advocacy for parents where the child protective custody and the uh, other agencies that's supposed to protect our children are snatching them from homes and putting them in 
foster care mm -hmm. and gaining big money, billions of dollars are being made just to pull our children out of their homes and throw them into a foster care mm -hmm. system as well. Also, I want to bring up uh, the impeachment petition that's been going around. I don't know if there's deadline has already been there but their psychiatrist was on tv just yesterday saying that um this uh president is you know he's mental well, I mean, yeah, he, I, he has signs of narcissism. See, we know that we're one thing to do another. Yeah, well, we know right. we know there were twenty seven psychiatrists that met at Yale University, and even though they did not did not diagnose him, they talked about how he had behaviors that were very alarming. Mm -hmm. uh, you talk about an impeachment petition; it's very important for people to understand the impeachment process. That comes from Article One and Article Two of the U.S. Constitution. Mm -hmm. Article Two, Section Four of the U.S. Constitution deals with uh, how high officials being uh, tried for treason, bribery, and high crimes and misdemeanors, okay? Mm -hmm. The articles of impeachment are drawn up in the U.S. House of Representatives. This is why it's important not just to vote for the U.S. Senate, but the U.S. House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. Once they decide to impeach a president by a vote, then the trial is held in the U.S. Senate, okay? Mm -hmm. the, to, to find the president guilty, then, so all the U.S. senators are the jurors, Okay, all the 100 U.S. senators are the jurors when the president is impeached. To find the president guilty, two thirds, basically 66 out of 100, have to vote to find him guilty. The uh, and when you have a jury, do you have a judge in the jury? The the judge that presides over the impeachment trial is the chief justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. OK, mm -hmm. which is also why voting for president is important, because we know the president nominates the uh, uh, justices of the Supreme, Supreme Court, Court, but they are interviewed and confirmed by the U.S. Senate. Mm -hmm. OK, so 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 there's never been a sitting U.S. president who has been removed from office. Uh, through the impeachment process. However, we do know Bill Clinton was impeached. He, he was put on trial December of 1998, mm -hmm. okay? Now, it does not mean it cannot happen because up until August 9th of 1974, you never had a sitting president who resigned from office until Richard Nixon did it. Mm -hmm. but, it but, but signing a petition for impeachment is, you can do that, but you have to show up November 6, 2018 because as long as Republicans are in control of the U.S. House of Representatives, this president would not be impeached. Mm -hmm. they, they, uh, Republicans uh, yeah. Republicans you. need him to <laughs> keep Thank signing off on their bills. Thank you for taking my call. I'll continue to listen to your program. Just one second, Sylvia. Republicans yes. need Trump, as demented as he is, to keep yes. signing off on bills that they pass from the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate. So you have right. to understand how this works. People can go to exactly. loc.gov, loc.gov, Library of Congress's website, and you can read the U.S. Constitution. Also, visit my website, africanhistorynetwork.com, africanhistorynetwork.com. Click on the banner for the YouTube videos, because I did a video recently dealing with Doug Jones uh, winning the U.S. Senate uh, debate and uh, U.S. Senate election in Alabama, and I talked about the impeachment process because it, it, Doug Jones said that uh, Trump should not be removed for sexual harassment, things like this. He's playing a strategy. He's in a state that voted for Trump of Trump won by 30 points. Alabama was a very red state, one of the former Confederate states, okay? Mm -hmm. So people have to understand that. But I did a video breaking all that down and how the impeachment process works. Thank you. You're all right, welcome. Sylvia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how you're viewing us, please? Yes, this is Tyrone. I, you know, I, I, I wanted a detailed understanding with our school system being dissolved, there ain't no more Detroit school system. It's community schools so they can bring in white kids downtown and don't have to deal with our children. We see that. We see that we got the housing problem. We got pe shutoffs, foreclosure, people uh, less uh, ownership. Under those conditions, I ask, what do we have to lose specifically because you said we have a whole lot to lose talking to your guests. Specifically, what do we have to lose in the, according to our conditions in Detroit? No uh, water shut off, foreclosure. What do we have to lose if somebody is not in Washington or D.C.? Well, you, well, well, well our condition, thank, thank, for, thank you for your call. Well, first of all, we have to think broader than Detroit. OK, what takes place in Washington drastically impacts us when you have the four point one trillion dollar budget that that passed before the tax cut passed that the, the f funds flow from the from the uh, federal government to the state flow down to 
the cities, mm -hmm. okay? So we've seen drastic cuts in various various programs. Uh, uh, they, they have cuts to the safety net, as we saw uh, in that budget, over $150 billion in cuts to the, uh, to the uh, various safety nets. We see that now uh, uh, Speaker of the House uh, 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 Paul Ryan and others are talking about now gutting Medicaid, Medicare, Social mm -hmm. Security, disability insurance. This is going to have a, a de devastating impact on Detroit. Once again, go to cbc.house.gov, read the 125-page agenda. We have a lot to lose because they lay out various issues that the African-American community is dealing with, and then they lay out how policies impact that. So once you read that, that will answer your questions. Mm -hmm. you, you will see how politics impacts every aspect of your life, okay? Mm -hmm. One of the things that people are pushing for now, coming out of Alabama, is saying, wait a second, with the Democratic Party, we agree more with your policies than the Republican policies. But what about all these contracts? What about these contracts you have for uh, uh, organizations to uh, get the vote out? What about uh, uh, various contracts that you give out? You, uh, only a very small percentage go to African-American-owned businesses, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you get 90% of our vote, we should get some more of that business, all right? So there, uh, the people, uh, you're going to see a lot of this taking place in 2018. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to let people know very quickly that I'm doing a double lecture coming up uh, Saturday, January 13th, Sunday, January 14th at the new Nandy's Knowledge Cafe located at 71 Oakman Avenue in Highland Park, Michigan, right off of Hamilton, 71 Oakman Avenue, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. both days. The first day, Saturday, January 13th, because it's Dr. King weekend. My presentation is the distortion of the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The revolutionary will not be televised on the television. The distortion of the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The revolutionary will not be televised on the television. The second day, Sunday, January 14th, same time, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. African American resistance in the era of Donald Trump. Voter suppression, reparations, and high elections have consequences. African American resistance in the era of Donald Trump. Voter suppression, reparations, and high elections have consequences. And on Monday, January 15th, for Dr. King Day, I'll be doing, I'll be doing a special online class dealing with the distortion of the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as well. We'll have the information at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Today, the uh, presentation at Nandy's is free, uh, donations accepted. And uh, you can also call us, 313-462-0003, 313-462-0003. We have one more caller. Okay. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how are you viewing us, please? Good morning, my wise and progressive friends. No, we can't hear you. Speak up, please. I can't hear you, but... We can't hear you either. I, Maybe a bad connection. You may have to call back. Good morning, my wise and progressive friends. How are you doing? Hey, good morning. Sam. Hi, Sam. Happy New First Year. First of all, we need to start learning to use the term impeach and remove. Mm -hmm. You remember Bill Clinton was impeached. Yeah, December 1998. Not removed. Not removed. So right. we, that's point number one I'd like to make. Mm -hmm. Second point I'd like to make is that the prison pipeline, you have, did you know that Governor England's wife, family, uh, Bill private prisons. Five. Bill's private prisons. Oh, private prisons. Yes. Which yes. which company? I mean, you know, the prison system has been privatized. Yes. yes. And we can't afford to have governmental people uh, putting black folks in in jail by privatizing, sending them to private uh, prisons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The third point that I'd like to discuss is this. Mm. The Honorable Thurgood Marshall, yes. after he retired from the U.S. Supreme Court, said that the U.S. Constitution is a white supremacist document. And I'd like uh, Brother M. Hotep to, to, the, to expound on that a little bit. Yeah, okay, okay. thank if you for the call. If we do not abolish the Electoral College, if we do not stop the... Democratic Party for having superior, what they call them, what, superior, uh, uh, they have a group that can uh, take away the, the will of the Democratic Party. You're talking about super uh, delegates? Super delegates. You're talking about super that's, delegates? That's the term I'm trying to look. Super delegates. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's been a reduction that? in the number of super delegates. Super delegate of yeah. the Democratic Party and abolishment of the, the uh, 
Black Doria Collins. Okay, thanks. Let me address your question because we ran out of time. Have a blessed day. Thank you, brother. Okay, thanks, for, first of all, the Democratic Party under Tom Perez, uh, chairman of the DNC, has already announced there's going to be a major reduction in the number of superdelegates. Mm -hmm. That largely comes from the fight from Bernie Sanders and others, number one. Number mm -hmm. two, he mm -hmm. talked about the uh, Electoral College. Okay, mm -hmm. well, first of all, the Electoral College is part of the U.S. Constitution, 1787 Philadelphia Convention. Then you have the uh, uh, 12th Amendment, which uh, amended the Electoral College. Uh, you cannot remove the Electoral College until, uh, unless you, uh, unless that amendment is ratified by three quarters of the state legislature, which means 38 out of 50. Republicans right now control about 33 state legislatures, which once again go, goes back to the vote. So yes, the Electoral College should be removed, okay, but that has to be removed through a, a electoral process, mm -hmm. okay? So people can't sit at home and say, I'm not going to vote, and they should remove the electoral, uh, electoral College, and you don't understand that until those state houses flip, mm -hmm. that you can't remove the, you can't amend the, uh, the, uh, the, the amendment uh, for the Electoral College, mm -hmm. okay? One way to get around that is more people need to vote. So 16.4 million African Americans were registered to vote in 2016, but only 59% voted. Mm -hmm. which was 7% lower than in 2012 when President Obama was on the ballot. We know that Donald Trump won the three battleground states of, of Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, the, key, the three key battleground states, by only 78,000 votes. 16.4 mm -hmm. million African Americans registered to vote, 59% vote. Mm -hmm. Trump wins the three key battleground states by 78,000 votes, which gives him the Electoral College vote, 16 for Michigan, that puts him over the top, puts him over 270. OK, mm -hmm. so we have the power right in our hands, but we don't understand how this works. So he talks about uh, Thurgood Marshall saying the uh, U.S. Constitution is a white supremacist tool. U.S. Constitution is the supreme law of the land, along with treaties. Article six of the U.S. Constitution tells you this. Now, if it's a white supremacist tool and we understand that white supremacy is a global system, but we understand that racism is a byproduct of white supremacy. And if, if these laws are designed to trap us, we should know them better than Europeans know. Right. So we understand how to navigate throughout the booby trap. Right. So once again, loc.gov, read and study the U.S. Constitution. Mm -hmm. gotcha. yeah. uh, no more callers, but uh, one of the things I'm concerned with, and uh, he did mention impeach and remove. Right. Now, impeachment doesn't silence the president. Impe like, like impe impeachment does not necessarily rem mean removal from office. That, that means the, 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 the uh, president is put on trial. OK, it's an impeachment process which starts in the U.S. House of Representatives. Articles of impeachment are drawn up. Articles of impeachment were drawn up uh, uh, for President Richard Nixon, but he resigned before the trial happened. First article of impeachment was obstruction of justice. Second article of impeachment was ab abuse of power. OK, so once again, people need to understand this process because I keep hearing people talk about impeachment. Impeachment, that does not mean removal from office. So, so is there any validity to having an impeachment if it doesn't do anything to either uh, silence or remove the president or whomever may? Well, yeah, it, it, there's a validity, but it's, it's, it's a process so one house of government doesn't have more power than another house of government. There, 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 there's validity uh, to it. Now, the other thing is that uh, <laughs> a lot of this could have been avoided if more people had voted. Okay, yeah. because because when with this because because the day after the election you saw all these people out in the street protesting, mm -hmm. and I'm watching on TV. I said I sure hope all these people voted right. and vote for somebody had a chance of stopping Trump, because Jill Stein had no chance of stopping Trump. Let's be very clear. Right. Mm -hmm. OK, so it's, it, it's not about see, we get caught up in personalities and who we like and who we don't like, as opposed to as opposed to focusing on policies. Mm -hmm. OK, policies are more important than personalities or political affiliation. We got less than mm -hmm. a minute. Well, we are <laughs> down to our list in a minute. Here. <laughs> Whoa. The first Monday in 2018 that we are back. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you all for tuning in and asking that you tune in again next Monday as well. As I said in 2017, it's not necessary for you to know everything. What is necessary is for you to know how to find what you need when you need it. We found Michael Limbo How about that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, we got to keep up with him. Yes. But um, for those of you who want to uh, support this program, please write your check or money order out to Hood Research, or if you prefer, you can write it out to WHPR, we have no objection to that. But we would ask that you mail it to Hood Research at P.O. Box 4416, Detroit, Michigan, 48204. Again, that's P.O. Box 4416, Detroit, Michigan, 48204. And we appreciate your support. And this coming Saturday, 
the research will be meeting, holding his own town hall meeting at 12048 Grand River on the corner of Wyoming at the Daybo Center. Again, that's 12048 Grand River, 2 p.m., 2 to 6, as a matter of fact. Join us, won't you, the leading? If you want to be nothing, do nothing. But the only problem with doing nothing is you never know when you're finished. And now, stay tuned for Get in the Know with Marley, Marley B. B. See Thanks you next week. All right, peace. You're watching W33BY, Detroit Highland Park, Michigan.